Hey, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be painting just a little bit of a flower arrangement. It's been a minute since I've painted a flower arrangement and I'm really excited to just dive in. And I've already got paint on my finger. <laughs> That's okay, we'll just move on. Um, I'm gonna start by just wetting my paints beforehand. And I've been kind of inspired by like peachy, coral, red, and pink color schemes lately. So that's what I'm going to kind of go for here. And I've picked up a few new colors in the last week and a new palette. So I've got all of my new colors on the palette. I'll try to remember which color is which as I'm using it. <laughs> but... I'll leave a link down in the description box below to my Amazon store if you want links to all the exact colors that I'm using. So this is a new color. This is Brilliant Pink by Holbein that I really, really like. And I've just mixed that with a little bit of the, a little bit of yellow ochre just to mute that down a little bit. And then of course, a lot of water. So this color, I mixed it earlier, but it's Rose Dore and then Brilliant Pink with a little bit of that yellow ochre as well. This is just whatever I had left on my brush mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre. <laughs> just keeping things easy over here. I don't want to mix too much and I want all the colors to kind of feel cohesive. I kind of like this blushy color I had going on. I'm going to mix these two together so I get like a nice in-between over here. Okay, now that I've got my main flowers down, I'm going to start adding in my green. And I like to use whatever is mixed on my palette already. It just makes things easier, but I think this was perylene green. Yeah, that's perylene green. And then a little bit of undersea green. And then to warm it up just a little bit, I'm going to add in 
some quinacridone gold, and a little bit of that rose doré. And then just some water to lighten it up quite a bit. I love quinacridone gold. It just has this really pretty, I don't know, it's like a sheen almost to it. I just love how it warms up my greens. It's really nice. So you know this bled way more than I wanted it to, but it's already done, so I'm just going to let it happen. I could just pick it up with a paper towel or something like that and just let it dry and then paint that in again, but I'm just going to let it be, and then we'll see what happens. I'm using a new paper. I've used it a couple times, actually. But it's... the brand is Fluid. It's called Fluid. <laughs> and then it's a cold press watercolor paper. And I really like it. It's on the cheaper side of like high quality papers. It's not as high quality as Arches, but I really like it so far. And then the brush that I'm using is one I picked up at Hobby Lobby. It's the Princeton Velvet Touch. And I really like this brush. I like it because the bristles are a little bit stiffer. And so I feel like I have more control over, especially fine lines. I have way more control. Alright, now there are a couple like weird white gap things happening. So I'm going to try and fill those in a little bit. I just mixed in a little bit of Payne's Gray, Permanent Green, and Hooker's Green to the color I already had mixed. I don't want to go crazy <laughs> on my green, so I'm going to stop there. And this is Perlene Maroon. It's a new color to my palette, and I love it. It's so pretty. I like mixing it with a little bit of Payne's Gray to make like a really deep, almost brownish purple.
We'll water it down just a little bit. Add in just a little bit of a texture here. And I didn't realize this was happening until just now. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to let it be. It is what it is. Sometimes if I don't catch it fast enough, it just already sets in and it would look really weird if I tried to fix it now. So we're just going to let it go and then see what kind of details we can add over the top to kind of help that. I'm going to go back into this area right here. Try to recreate that color we had before. So it was a little bit of yellow ochre. Just adding in some little tiny details here. And then quinacridone gold, I'm just going to tap right into the center. This is dry. I think I'm going to use Payne's Gray for the center of that. Maybe I'll just mix in a little bit more to that mixture I had before. So it's going to be like a really deep blue. And I'm just... Okay, that's totally dry, so now I can go in and not have to worry about this blue bleeding out into the rest of this really pale flower. To get the fine lines, I'm just holding my brush straight up and down. I feel like just when I kind of am looking at this, I can see that I need something that's darker over here just to help ground everything. And I don't want to go crazy, so I'm just going to add in little details over here. That just kind of helped round everything out. And now with, I think that's, nope, this is alizarin crimson right next to it. With all my reds right next to each other, they get a little confusing sometimes. I just want to darken up the center of this rose a little bit. I'm waiting in between adding more layers for this to dry, and I just posted a video last week where... I showed you this technique for adding depth after each layer has dried. So if you want to see that, go back to last week's video. I'll have it linked down in the description box below. But I'm going to do that same kind of technique up here too. A 
Oh dear. <laughs> See, sometimes that happens. I'm just going to try and pick that paint up with a dry brush. It's just whatever I had sitting next to me. That's what I'm using. So if you want to avoid that happening on your painting, just wait for the layer to dry. <laughs> I always like a little bit of opera rose. I think it just adds a fun little pop. But I don't want to go overboard with it, so I want to add more, but I'm not going to. And to finish it off, I think I'll just add a couple little leaves and then call it good. So if you have any questions, see there's that bleeding again. So here now what's going to happen is this, I'm going to have to wait for that to dry completely and then go over the top of it with a green layer if I want to. I kind of like how it turned pink, so I might just leave it. Just kind of even that out a little bit. Well, <laughs> there we go. One trick with knowing if your painting is done or not is sometimes you need to step back or I like to take a picture with my phone every once in a while and just look at it and and see where I still am missing something. Now, I recommend taking a picture with your phone because if you hold it up and step back, sometimes your painting's not quite dry. You don't want your paint to drip. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up and then share it with a friend. I've also put together a free supply checklist with all of the supplies I recommend for getting started with painting watercolor flowers. So if you want to check that out, visit my website, snowberrydesignco.com forward slash now, and you can find the link there. I'll also have it linked down in the description box below if you want to check that out. Thanks again for watching. Bye.